Hello and welcome to Bricks and Banter, the show with real talk from the custom LEGO community. I'm your host as always, Billy, and today we have our first ever real celebrity guest. You know him for his ripped bod, obsession with Jeeps, and most importantly, his appearance on Fox's LEGO Masters. That's right, I'm talking today with none other than Christian Cowgill. So with no further ado, here is our conversation. How you doing? I am good. It is an honor to be on the very famous podcast. Thank you for having me. Dude, it's an honor to have you. You're a very famous person. Like I all of my <laughs> all of my guests up until this point, all I had to do was look at their Instagram pages and just from what I know about them as a person. And I mean, I know you quite well and especially been keeping track on your Instagram of what's been going on, but I like I decided like, oh, I could actually look this person on Safari and like find out other information that I don't know. And it, that was wild as the first guest. <laughs> I'll tell you what's even more nuts is I have my own IMDb page. Like that I in know. my mind is freaking nuts. I know. Isn't that something? One of my friends growing up uh, was into acting. And when I discovered he had an IMDb page, I was like, I was blown away. It's nuts. It's quite a badge of honor. And I'm really flattered that somebody took the time to make that for me. Yeah. So just getting started into things. I mean, the big, the elephant in the room here is the Lego Masters, but I want to know how'd you get to the point, you know, to be in Lego Masters. So, what was young Christian Cowgill doing? Was he building Lego? What what's the story there? So, this all began in uh, Lord. I'm not even sure when I was a small child, and my mm. mom had gotten me a Jackstone Fire Rescue First Responder. Oh little dura builder kit one of these things where it doesn't take much to build it. it involves a lot of technic and some you know accessory pieces that are fun to play with right. and something that's a little more middle age for kids that aren't going to eat the legos but still know what they're dealing with and mm -hmm. that bright red little truck was the first little ignition piece that just i loved it that bright red really just kept me coming back to it and then my grandmother had gotten us one of those giant bins of lego like nothing like in particular just mass bulk of tons yeah, of yeah, parts. Yeah. we built dinosaurs we built you know uh pyramids all kinds of stuff and then of course the og bionicles came into it and the comics and oh i was just all into it and of course you know action figures the spiral off there but eventually lego became more of the forefront and you know as i grew the hobby morphed for me it was around mm. 2011 that i finally joined Flickr after kind of following it loosely through uh, my high school computers i would go on uh rebellia's Flickr if anybody remembers him he would probably i, I don't actually fig stuff. oh hell he was a great fig poster and he made mm -hmm. this ghillie suit out of burlap and put it on a figure. And I thought it was the coolest thing nice. in the world. So I had to make that. And, you know, just those early days of Flickr posting. And, you know, ironically, listening to your past podcast, Danny, my first order was from Brickforge and Spartan Armor. Because mm -hmm. I was obsessed with Halo, as I'm sure many people were too. And that was the beginning of, you know, my love for lego and the community that it came with i had honestly no idea it would grow this big and there were a lot of times that you know over the years i thought i was going to get out of it but it was because of the people behind it and the love and the inspiration that just kept me coming back and of course joining the military too there morphed this new sense of you know, I got to build that. I'd see a Black Hawk and be like, I would love to have one in my own faction or right. I'd see, uh, in M1 Abrams and just be like, dude, I got to build that. And naturally, two bricks got put together and here we are. Yeah, that's amazing. It's really notable. I mean, you were a big figure in the military community on Flickr to begin with, and then you just kind of <laughs> grown past that. Too kind. Into too kind. Stardom. <laughs> It's, it's I the mean, truth. it's weird. You know, I look back on things like The Purge and World in Conflict. I wasn't a part of that, but I drew a lot of inspiration off of that. And mm. it's really cool to get to bring those to light because in the internet, you know, it's very one, two, three, 
here and gone in the next five seconds. So it's important to the historians to, you know, let the little ones know where we've all come from and where, you know, we are today and how much to enjoy that. You know, back in the day, we didn't have all these fancy vests or <laughs> printed elements. I remember right. using like dino attack figures to do anything. Oh. Like that was my like major use part for anything faction related or oh lord, what was another big thing? Brick armed, but that was everybody knows that was the OG. Citizen Brick really didn't come on the scene for me until I'd say 2016, really. That wow. was when I started going to things like Brick Fair Virginia, which I still go to. Unfortunately, not this year. It was past right. year because of COVID. But God was your like, first year for there really uh, 2016? Yeah, it was. I have the Brick badge and everything. It was one of those very transformative years, and we'll get into that a little bit later. But it definitely was one that I look back fondly on. It was a big pinnacle point in who I am today. You know, there were so many amazing moments at those conventions that I cherish. And I look back through the photos and just all the goofy stuff that we would do. And I got to thank Jeremy, who's uh, Commander Turtles on Flickr and Instagram. There's Jeremy the Nomad now. I think he switches handle. But yeah, I think so. he was the guy that actually just stopped me and just started talking to me and you know at first i was just kind of like i don't know about this guy you know i'm just some random dude in a big like warehouse style convention yeah, convention hall mm -hmm. right i felt a little bit like fish out of water here and almost like i don't know about this but <laughs> they started cracking cases open and my eyes just lit up i was like whoa what's all this <laughs> These are my people like, right they're like well hey you know let me show you what we got. Let's let's hook you up. And they just start giving me stuff. And it was that generosity and the warm atmosphere and the immediate friendship that just kept me coming back. It was amazing. That's and it terrific. actually came with more than I ever expected. It came with lifelong friends that I aim to keep bothering to the day I die. Yeah, for real. The military community, I feel like, unlike many of the other like subsects in the Lego world, is just so welcoming at conventions it's really just mm -hmm. easy easy to integrate Indeed. with veteran builders and just anyone who's in that scene at the events it's really awesome oh definitely so a guy by the name of alexander stein a true vehicle designing master was so morphing with how he just taught me how to do vehicle stuff and i still to this day have the swedish cv90 that just every convention i was absolutely obsessed with and I would be asking him all kinds of questions about it, playing around with it. And he could tell that I just absolutely loved the thing so much so that, it, you know, we just got talking one day and she's like, you want me to build you one? And I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he built me a, a tan one just out of my bricks. And I still have the thing to this day. It's since morphed into now a kind of like a rusted over uh, CB90 that I plan to use for a coming brick fair mock whenever it happens but it's going to definitely be a big memento for him and all that he's taught the military group you know he taught andrew somers who taught me and it's almost like you know getting to learn from my sensei sensei and to touch on andrew somers me and him have been best friends since 2012 or 13 i think Oh, wow. And, and just through like Flickr? Yeah. I specifically remember the DM and I was like, hey, man, you know, I think we'd be real good friends. Let's <laughs> chat some time. Literally, it was exactly that. And he's like, that's, yeah, sure. I'd be totally down. Here's my email. You, know, you can plug it in. If you have an iPhone, we can chat on that. And I was like, okay, cool. And like that, we just became instant pals. And he eventually that's actually so I love it. to Kentucky on a total whim his parents were like you know if it's a bad situation we'll fly you back home and you know total like you know stranger danger kind of shit and yeah. <laughs> we had a ton of fun we were gorging on hot pockets and you know just supercharging on vehicle building having fun and he actually got sick too because you know the difference between california weather and kentucky weather is pretty different because we live in the ohio valley which has a lot of different 
uh, elements in the air that can, to a person who's not used to it, definitely hurt your sinuses. So it's something to adjust to, which <laughs> thank God for Sprite, because that's what really just helped him level back out. And he's since been back out twice now. He drove through on his way back west, and that was another, again, very fun um, rekindling of a friendship. And then, of course, when I went out to Los Angeles to film Lego Masters, I was out there for three months. So me and him were hanging out basically every other weekend excuse me, every weekend. And he was just showing me his city because I showed him mine. And it was just so cool to get to fall in love with Los Angeles with my best friend at my side. And it felt like we were just taking on the city together, you know, causing all kinds of trouble, exploring, like just nerding out about the architecture. Oh, it was an amazing time. That that sounds like phenomenal. That's like the dream, just meeting up with a Online oh, buddy. that's how every brick fair is, getting to meet up with yeah. all the homies. And I cherish every memory, you know, like, <laughs> uh, I specifically remember we went to downtown D.C. with Jeremy, Danny, and Eric, and yeah. we were just big booling on this subway car. And I think we ended up passing out because we were so tired. But <laughs> just the amount of goofy fun and the real friends that you can make here. Like these guys, I trust them with my life and I'd lay mine down without a split second of hesitation. Like anybody that's not been to Brick Fair or some kind of convention and has the opportunity, go and talk to people. You will make some amazing friends. Yeah. The, it's 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 unreal. I I think all my Flickr wrap ups after like three or four years just I called them a family reunion and then put the year mm, afterward. I love that. I just <laughs> Speaking about you and Andrew Summers, you guys uh, worked recently on your Jeeps design and making them yeah, available so to more people actually with new instructions. Back in, oh Lord, that's when he actually came through to back through Kentucky to on his way back west. That was 20, that had to have been early 2019, if memory serves correctly. So we were screwing around with one of Evan Mellick's Humvee designs, but we were also kind of supercharging on the Jeep design. So initially I came out with the concept, which was a, I would say clever reworking of one of his SUV designs because they follow a similar pattern. But the issue with the Wrangler frame is that the fender integration into what's essentially a rigid box, it's a bit, it's big, it's a bit complicated. And you know, after we were screwing around with this Humvee, there were elements in it that really jumped out to Andrew. And I didn't even know this at the time. Homie internalized them and then went back home and just started cracking it out. And we just kept texting back and forth about different designs. And we eventually settled on one that was easily the best thing that I've ever seen in a long time when it comes to innovation of his particular design. Because when you get comfortable with the design, you just want to, you just keep seeing it. It's hard to break out of that shell. Right. But yeah, it was really something just different and really much like the actual reworking of the JK frame. <clears throat> it was in a league of its own. It was something that nobody had ever seen before and was absolutely breathtaking. It spoke to architectural and technical genius and still carried with it the same fun play and functionality that all of his vehicles have had from the get-go, which I thought was amazing. Yeah, they still maintain like the minifigure kind of yeah, element they still to maintain them all. Min awesome. The minifigure like compatibility, you can put four figs inside, uh, the front aperture or axles rather will turn left and right and adjust to the surfaces you roll them on, much like an actual car. And then the back axle will adjust the same. It won't turn much like an actual car, but it just kind of hangs out back there and is just there for the ride. <laughs> yeah, they're they're amazing. Yeah, thank and you. those are still uh, those instructions are still available, right? Through um, Andrew. Yeah, so Andrew still has them available, and if you want one built, I also do commissions, and actually we both do commissions. So it just depends upon who you want to build it for you. 
The problem with them is that there's only a particular kind of color scheme we can work with. I fortunately have come into a large quantity of the one by three or one by two by three corner tile elements that are in the back doors in tan. A guy from Germany sold them to me and they're like impossible to find right now because again, there's so much like color control and I'm like, come on, Lego, we need more of this. <laughs> <laughs> I thought about doing that's really a, good to know like a creator thing and send it up to him and turn it into an actual kid which would be sick yeah that would be amazing so beyond your work with uh Andrew there on the jeeps you have a a deep love for the jeeps I don't want to say obsession but uh it almost toes the line if you look at your Instagram feed where did that all start <laughs> it's definitely like a cult at this point <laughs> <laughs> So this is a big thing for car lovers in general, not just Jeeps, but we'll get into where my love comes from, but I just admire people's passion for their cars. We see this in Mustang owners, Dodge Challenger and Charger owners, especially with the Hellcat. That's a big flex. And in Grand Cherokees, actually, that's become a real big thing. And even the old Cherokee, the XJ frame, that's become a bit of a, like a, collector's item much like the cj5 or some of the older jeep models or the wrangler models to be specific where mm. my love came from was back in 2016 again the big developmental point for me so i had a 2007 jk and flipped it twice and almost killed myself and oh. it was that vehicle like you know that scene in titanfall 2 when bt like he's like you know must protect the pilot and throws you out and it's just that's what went through my head with like a hybrid of the end scene from modern warfare like cod 4 where you're just up on the bridge zakaev is coming to kill you price slides you in the 1911 you know basically a very monumental moment because my jeep actually was like flipped over on its side and it was insane it was easily the biggest life hurdle since like basic for me and because of what that vehicle did for me and how much i was obsessed with it how much i loved it and worked so hard to get back to it because i actually spent about three years in a volvo s60 turbo charge which was a lot of fun but you know my true passion for jeep was just through my you know old jeep and i missed it like crazy and i eventually ended up getting a another 07 in 2019 early 2019 april i think and then moved to the 2021 jeep wrangler jl which is just like a lamborghini compared to the old jeeps it's i'm absolutely obsessed with the thing it's <laughs> i could not be more blessed and fortunate to get to have the pleasure to drive one of these bad boys yeah that's amazing i'm not much of a car guy but you kind of you appealed to me. And I was like, I was feeling it. I was like, damn, this this sounds amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and it takes time, you know. Initially, I wasn't, you know, because I thought to myself, you know, you see movies like Transformers, like the first one, the good one. The, the rest kind of went downhill, we'll be honest. But you know, Shia LaBeouf just displays such a big love for his Camaro, which ironically, I thought I was going to like him, but didn't. You could barely see anything out of him, and. You know, you take movies like the Fast and the Furious franchise. It was just this big man and machine combination that goes through your head when you're watching these. You're like, dang, I wonder what is my car? For the longest time, I thought it was going to be a Mazda. Or no, excuse me. It was between an Audi R8 or the Mazda CX-5, I think. It's like their, their sports car, fancier, not the typical A to B um vehicle that they produce but uh my brother ended up getting a 08 jk and he let me drive it a couple times and just like that dominating the road feeling just course through my veins and the amount of you just feel like you're at a I don't know. It's just like a different presence on the road. There's this BMW advertisement I saw, which said that same exact thing. 
uh, that was just simply one of their SUVs and it was dominate the road. And I'm like, <laughs> really? Is that, is that what you feel? <laughs> Cause I'm in my Jeep and I feel like I'm just on cloud nine. Yeah. That's amazing. Now I, I got to try a Jeep sometime. <laughs> you do. And what's important to remember is that each one is going to drive different, especially if they're older and the different kinds of tires they have on them. One thing that mm-hmm. I wasn't tracking on initially was the fact that the tires that I bought on my Jeep are more of an off-road. Um, they're more of an off-road ready kind of setup. That's what the whole Willys package is all about is it has Rubicon suspension, which to explain the Rubicon, it is stock ready to roll off-road. So you don't have to do any mods to it. It's got a sway bar disconnect that allows the wheels to move freely, which is so cool which allows for a better ability to overland or crawl over rocks and such. Mm -hmm. Uh, The Willys doesn't have that button. However, you can pull it manually, which, you know, if you want to do that, go for it. But the Willys package is a, like a hybrid of a cosmetic and a functionality package. It sports like a black grill, black rims, which the two tone for me has always been something I've loved. And I got it in a sting gray color, which is this very, like almost like a matte but glossy dark gray and it's just it has such a shark profile it just spoke to me immediately and then the aggressive tires and the red suspension i was just like yep this one's for me <laughs> <laughs> and naturally i threw with it uh what's called the alpine speaker system which is a company that does audio and i think other stuff too but <clears throat> just the quality of audio that's produced from those speakers is unparalleled coupled with apple and android uh compatibility with a touchscreen it's like you're again in a lamborghini of jeeps it's quicker it's more fuel efficient it's like a completely different wrangler and i just couldn't be more proud of how the company has transformed from an american brand to a worldwide brand which i think is even cooler listen you sold me you don't need a pitch <laughs> <laughs> I was a salesman for a little bit. And I, I know, I know. Uh, I saw it. I felt it coming through. <laughs> <laughs> and like, Dude, I don't even have a pen in my closet right now to sign, but I was trying to find one. <laughs> well, thank you. I'm flattered. <laughs> Can I put down some CB figs as like collateral to get one or what's the I deal? Think that's a good down that? payment. I think we can get that worked out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So moving on here into a uh, previously mentioned elephant in the room, but Lego masters that, that was hum- huge for just so many reasons. Knowing you beforehand, it was just awesome to see your, your homie just on the show. And then, uh, yeah, I mean, you made it so far too. It was, it was tremendous, but how Thank did you, you get approached to be on that to begin with? So this dates back to 2019 brick fair, actually, you know, me, me, and a bunch of the other chug lug fellas are sitting around our zombie apocalypse display we built and they're very to themselves, which I respect that. But me, I'm very conversational with anybody. And that's just, I got that from my grandfather. And that's something that I still strive to be. It's just, I love talking with people. And this young guy, Raph comes up to us and uh, there was another female counterpart. I don't remember her name, but they're talking to us about our mock, if we could do it bigger with infinite brick, you know, <laughs> if it was under a time constraint, would that be okay? What would happen if something were to happen to it? Like, how would you react? And I'm answering all these questions. Like, I'm just talking to you. And their final kicker is, all right, so who wants to be on TV? And I'm like, oh, uh, I do. Hi, my name is Christian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then that following Thursday, we set up a Skype call and what's funny is that I got the green light in the middle of the semester at U of L or the mm. university of Louisville for those that don't know. And I literally, <laughs> without a split second hesitation, told my professors, look, I'm not dropping your class cause I'm doing poorly. There's an amazing opportunity that I can only give you bits and pieces about that has fallen into my lap. I'm taking it. You know, this, I'll see you next semester. And sure enough, the, oh, Lord, October 29th, I'll never forget it. 
I was flying out to Los Angeles because I literally the night before went to go party at a loud luxury concert or more was that a concert more like a rave eh, more of a concert I'd say they're like they're like an EDM group because it wasn't like festival esque it was just very club very like poppy and stuff but it, basically I was just totally shit phased <laughs> <laughs> and like a moral of the story they. <laughs> Well, the, they wanted me to build something that was supposed to be used in the trailer. Ironically, they didn't even use that at all. Mm. And as it goes, I know it's that's just how Hollywood works. They're very like, if it works, great. If not, get it out of here. We're not going to use it. Which I admire that. I really do. It's a very like quick and um, well oiled machine. They got all yeah, the options. very practical. They got all the mm. options, but. I've literally blasted at like 4 a.m. trying to build this thing. And drunk me can like build really well. But for <laughs> some reason, it just was not happening. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go to sleep for a little bit and we're going to hit it. Because I had to be up for like an 8 a.m. flight. So you got to be at the airport two hours prior. So I go to sleep for like 30 minutes. All of a sudden, it's 5 a.m. And I'm like, holy shit. So I do the quickest like little road diorama that's maybe 36 studs by 36 studs and, you know, pack it all in this little bag, get my shit together. And I'm on the plane still totally shit. <laughs> I literally was just gone. I'm like, how did I get here? Ironically, when I went up to Aaron's uh, birthday and bachelor party, the same thing happened again. I was just destroyed on the plane back home to Kentucky. And I'm like, I don't know how I got here, but all right. We made it. <laughs> <laughs> I kid you not, I woke up an hour before the flight in New York and somehow made it through perfectly. Like the amount of like efficiency, like if you're a TSA worker, thank you for what you do. You're just an amazing group of people. Yeah. An hour in New York, that's that that's oh, it was well, I think what helped was that it's Sunday morning and just it in mm. general was like super dead. Cause the thing is that's happened to me before. So when I was going home from like masters, uh, <laughs> I, uh, we were, me and Raph, he was linking up with us after everything was said and done. We were chit chatting and the Uber came to grab us. And, uh, <laughs> the guy was like, are you trying to get to the LAX? And I'm like, yeah. Like, dude, you should have called me like three hours ago. It's like traffic is nuts right now. I'm like, fuck. So he's like, I'll throw it in sport mode. Just don't report me for running any red lights. I'm like, all right, bet. <laughs> and homie just uh, fast and the furious this thing. I still missed the flight, but I got to explore LAX in a whole new way. But uh, just, oh my God, it was. <laughs> oh my Lord. Log more to the story. Make sure you're at the airport two hours prior. <laughs> that, that's my two cents from the old Christian Calgo travels. Isn't it going to happen again? Probably. <laughs> I'm human, people. That's the big thing to take away from this. Sometimes we drink too much and wake up an hour before the flight. It happens. <laughs> yeah, it happens. And so... You're there finally, Lego Masters. Well, I mean, before it must have ha happened, but you uh, got paired up with Aaron, and you guys are buddies. How did that all start? So we had known each other through the Lego community for a minute, and then we had talked about getting on the show together and casting thought that it would be a brilliant idea. So we just naturally were like, yeah, let's do it. But the thing was, we hadn't built together before. So it was a total winging it kind of situation mm. when we were going into the first build. And <clears throat> once you kind of got the rhythm down, it became a lot easier. You became familiar with where things were. It was very machinable almost, which I love that about Legos. When you get something going, much like the Jeeps, for example, I can build one in less than a minute we, me and the buddies of the dealership actually timed it uh because one of his kids oh, okay. ended up breaking the models that we sold him and i just put it back together for him real quick and this was a total like you know uncharted waters kind of thing and you know they were wanting us to work with technic which i really 
don't know, even to today, how most of that stuff works. Aaron is a true genius when it comes to that stuff. Like his character shaping, his technical ability with Technic, unparalleled. He really did make up a very important part to that team dynamic. And he starts building this Ferris wheel. And I'm like, this guy's on some next level stuff. I'm over here like, yeah, I'm building like a little, I think it might work, UFO thingy. <laughs> I was so like, oh my Lord, what? And he's I over there just reinventing the wheel. Just... Literally. And I was like, oh God, I really hope I could even be on par with him. And what's amazing is that he taught me a lot of stuff that, you know, I still use even to today. So it was both a chance to represent Flickr and all the, you know, amazing people that I've met over the years, but also a chance to just burn a new trail, which was so cool. So you just touched on it a little bit there, but I had a, a question I wanted to ask. Since being on the show, has anything changed about the way you approach building? So the just first on thing own. is the level of organization that was on that show. The team behind Lego Masters did not get enough credit for the amount of organization they did and taking apart our builds afterwards. Some of them, not most of them. Some of them are actually on display at different like Lego uh, parks, if not malls, which is awesome. But yeah, uh, that's really cool. I didn't yeah, know that. It's amazing. Uh, but they single handedly took everything apart, reorganized it, put it in these bins. They, they couldn't keep up with us. We were building too fast for them, which was a really yeah. funny thing. But another thing that really stuck with me. So Brickmaster Amy, she hit me with this line because <laughs> in the joke of it is I built another big uh, tan building and she's like, you shouldn't be afraid to add a pop of color. Lego is a fun world where you can throw any kind of color in and it works. And I was mm -hmm. like, oh, that had never really clicked for me before. And with my building now, it's very, how can I work a clever color in very subtly that tells a story? So like yeah. pinks or tans or, you know, a lot of different like earthly colors for sure still, but stuff that is different than what you see in the normal realism side to military stuff. Like primary example with the recent like greenhouse build I did and I posted to my I was just going to say it. I was just going <laughs> to say that's going to come at a better time because right. you just posted today uh, a scene with uh, predominantly in the background was uh, some flowers and a really nice pink pop, but it totally worked with the environment and scene. And it was just, it made the scene so vibrant. Thank you, sir. And what's funny is that, you know, the, where I'm at now with the military side of things, I never thought I'd really arrive at it. It's not necessarily apocalypse, but I like to call it more like semi-apoc. The whole like idea behind why everything's like overgrown is a hydroelectric dam exploded in my faction storyline, creating a mass surge of life and storytelling ability that really changes the environment for what was once a more desert-based faction. Now they're dealing with a different dynamic that they've not run into before is this massive jungle and what's supposed to be an urban landscape that's now all of a sudden much like crisis three where you're in overgrown new york and just i find that so fascinating the yeah. uh literal concrete jungle you're in the different dynamics the mystery behind it the stories that one can tell from that i've always been really fascinated by like old wrecks and abandoned buildings and helicopters that have crashed and stuff like that because you're always just like oh how'd that happen why'd that happen you know, the history behind it has always really fascinated me. And it's like this cool hybrid of man and nature put together. It's really cool. Yeah, yeah that's one of my favorite uh, themes, like a kind of postmodern element. Yeah, exactly. And that's kind of I, where I, my I avoid using that term because I feel like it gets confused with the art genre. But um, right. I mean, <laughs> I like it's the best way to approach it. Yet another really fun art genre. Yeah, this is true. But, um, Especially just the overgrown. It always reminds me a bit of Last of Us, too. Yes, um, that's another good one. It's this uh, very... Not, society hasn't exactly collapsed, but it's very on the brink of it. Yeah, just the overgrown much nature. Much like how just, today is. <laughs> huh? I would say much like how today is. 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you never know if society's going to collapse tomorrow or not. It's always a fun chance to wake up and say, well, today might be the day. And on this episode of 2021. <laughs> Great way to kick off the year. Speaking of um, things that might have influenced your style, you mentioned uh, having to recreate the ghillie suit that you saw a long time back on Flickr using mm -hmm. the cloth stuff. Uh, but you're not predominantly a modder, but certainly a lot of the, the boys you roll with and spend your time with are. Has that do-it-yourself kind of style and approach to Lego influenced how you build with bricks? I would say a bit of both. So Andrew and Alexander definitely taught me a lot when it came to the vehicle building. And mm -hmm. Andrew actually inspired me with the scenes. At one point, I was kind of replicating his, not in a one-to-one -one scale, but more of like a silent nod to what his scenes were. So that general style of, uh, I would like to call it minimalism. But then it's also exploded into my own style, which I think that's the important thing for anybody to do is take something and run with it. Yeah. So like all you know, great artists steal as however the saying goes. <laughs> I'd like to use the term either, uh, you know, if you were going to go out in a pirate aspect, creatively borrow or <laughs> <laughs> you just take the inspiration from something you see and turn it into something else, which mm -hmm. that's kind of how it was with Andrew's stuff, like his faction and that whole community rather like world in conflict. And I think there was a spinoff off that, that Andrew was a part of, um, can't remember the name to it but it was very inspiring to me of like oh it'd be so cool to have my own little military and create their own little story and it's fortunately still going and i'm blessed to have the time to you know do what i can for it yeah and that kind of subgenre of making your own storylines and all that's kind of kind of dead with the uh, flicker losing you know its popularity Oh, big time. <laughs> I'm like yeah. the only one still doing it. Yeah. <laughs> it's refreshing, though. I love seeing that stuff. Thank I you. Love, I uh, that. love callbacks to a forgotten time. Indeed. Like I said, we're the old OGs just trying to remember or remind people, rather, where we all came from kind of thing. Not in a yep. overly prevalent way. Like, you damn kids don't know nothing about how it was back in the day. Back but in my day. Like a, you know, this is what really built me as a builder and what i still enjoy to do part of my dog she's joining us in on this conversation special guest appearance special guest appearance Smokey. she's quite the highlight on my instagram post oh, yeah. at one point i stopped posting her for a little bit because i just i think i forgot to and i was like is Smokey okay where is she <laughs> she was very missed and yes you were as it would turn out half your followers are only there for Smokey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably. She is the cutest little beagle. So, to wrap up here, we have uh, the Copper Drop segment. First up, we have uh, JK Customs Triple Pouch Vest, which will be 3D printed. It's an up-and-coming brand. How are you feeling? Is it a Copper or a Drop? You know, I like the design with it, and he seems like a new, very young, third-party custom guy, which I have an amazing amount of respect for that. Somebody trying to cut their own very self-made kind of individual you know it's a difficult market out there you know with such big brands like citizen brick or brick arms or tiny tactical there's a lot to compete with and yeah i would say i would cop it it looks like a sweet vest i'd definitely be interested to see it in person and give my final opinion seeing a, a rendered image it does look good but you know right right growing up on brick arms and using their vests and there's another tiny tactical and there's a third guy i've used lately uh, minifig cat has some good stuff yeah minifig brick. cat and oh lord tactical brick i think the guy with the open pouch much like this guy with the rig that allows uh minifig torsos to be shown which is a great detail for figures mm. All of them carry with this a very... Oh, finished... Brick Tactical. Yeah. Brick Tactical, yeah. thank you. Right. I was doing it backwards. But um, they all carry with them a very finished product. You know, that nice, glossy ABS look that meshes so well with the figure, with which her, I think yeah. is very important. And I forget what company had done them, but there was a knockoff of Brick Arms that I had seen and it just looked terrible. I mean, it was not glossy. It was rough to feel in your hands. I'm wondering if they were 3D printed. 
but it's something that's just like, you know, you got to see a final product, but the initial is like, yeah, I would totally cop it, but you know, I'd like to see it, feel it, see it on a fig before I would say, this is a, yeah, like it's something I would totally buy. Awesome. So it's a maybe a cop. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. To conclude, a maybe a cop. All right. Next up. It's a little bit old since we're recording this, but still relevant because I still haven't received mine at least. Um, the Citizen Brick 10 year poster and figure. Oh man, I guess I outed myself there as a Citizen Brick simp that I would have cough up the hundred dollars for one. But, um, mm. <laughs> what are your feelings on that one? It's definitely a neat poster, Joe. I'm a, still a big fan of to this day, and you know, I miss more like the modern stuff that he's done, which he's done some stuff, but back in the day, it was like a bunch of very niche stuff and definitely love to see more of that return. I would, I would cop it. I would definitely cop it as a uh, memento that all Citizen Brick has done for the community and will still continue to do. Yeah. Yeah. I couldn't agree more. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> and it, it comes with the minifigure too. Oh, yeah. get out of town. That's really cool. Yep. I'm not a big Harry yellow figure guy, like yellow tone mm-hmm. yeah i grew out of that in oh lord it was some middle point of flicker but uh yeah that's just not really a something i would po- like, oh, well, i'd probably post it but not use on a regular basis it's more of like a wall piece if you will or something that's more like a art thing you dig yeah yeah i get you mm-hmm all right, last item here. Something that's got me really excited is the um, the Mayfeld arm from Brick Arms. Yes, this is going to be really sick. So right off the bat, that arm element, it's like an advanced U-clip that's really going to allow for really unique yeah. connection points. And uh, I, I, Oh, holy cow. You know what I'm realizing now is that that's going to be actually a really great turret element as well. Because what I've used in the past was a um, droid arm for my turret mounts and then the mm-hmm. um uh it's like the monopod to yep. spiral off that and then the actual mount for whatever uh cruiser weapon i would choose to sling on there but that's going to be a really awesome element for that the whole star wars segment that will has done is definitely really sick and then the modern stuff that he's included as well is really sweet as well the pkp the stoner 63 that he's coming out with i just wish there was yeah. more of it you know <laughs> yeah i would the love stoner... a modern version of the barrett m82 to see a revamp of that would just be amazing true the um the stoners are coming to uh eclipse graphics as a oh. workshop wonder and apparently the few that are going over there are a different design than the ones uh from dan which is pretty interesting really yeah, I, I don't know what uh, sets them apart, but um, so I hear. Pretty excited for those. I got a. It's finally the opportunity to get one without having to pay seven hundred dollars for a kit. So, right. <laughs> they know people want the brick arm, so they gotta put a barrier between them. Yeah, but yeah, I'm I'm stoked for this arm. Uh, for the longest time, I've tried to figure out some sort of arm component that could swing around the Lego figure's head, and just to no avail. None of them looked clean and compact and this is just it's all those things Mm -hmm. and will has blown that out of the water through the years i'm so proud of both him and joe and i'm honored to get to call them personal friends and just see how much their product has grown and developed over the years that's really something else yeah no for real anyways it's been a real pleasure to have you on the podcast christian thank you so much for coming on thank you for having me on here and uh, before you go, I have one question from a fan here. Sure. Are you going to fuck Hunter's mom this brick fair? <laughs> oh, Lord. Uh... <laughs> that came out of left field. But I feel like everybody's been wanting to know that for a while now. Uh... TBD. Would I be opposed <laughs> to it? I don't know. So coming from a moral standpoint, I don't really, uh, I just, I, that was not something that I would take personal pride in is, you know, coming between a marriage like that. That's just not right. something I would operate. <laughs> I, like it definitely in a, you know, different world. Yeah. That'd be amazing. But out of respect for their marriage, 
you know, I love Mr. Erickson and Mrs. Erickson. They're an amazing set of people. They've invited me down to Florida numerous times. Oh, and man. They they really want me to come down for some reason. So it definitely is. Oh, like, I mean, who's <laughs> to say? I swear, it, it's us for sure. But <laughs> uh, Is this like a cop or drop segment? It's a maybe cop. <laughs> Oh I'd cop God. that. <laughs> I'm sure there'd be a lot of people who would. She's a very beautiful woman. <laughs> Thank you, Christian. I'll see you oh, around. Of course, of course. Anytime, Billy. And that wraps up my conversation with Christian. He is one of the kindest and most genuine guys I know. I couldn't be happier than to have him on the podcast. Make sure to follow him on Instagram. That's Chris underscore Cowgill. That's C-O-W-G-I-L-L. And consider commissioning a Jeep from him. They are amazing. As always, thank you all for listening. If you enjoyed the podcast, share it with a friend or leave us a review on iTunes. I want to give a huge thank you to all of our patrons over on Patreon.com. As always, we have Seth, Luger Enthusiast, Topolev, Mike, and Justin. I cannot thank you guys enough. If you are interested in supporting the podcast as well, you can check out the link tree on our Instagram bio, and that will lead you directly to our Patreon. Thank you all again for listening, and come back next week as we talk with Martin, a.k.a. The Brick Man.